Do you find the terminal boring? If so, today I'm going to show you how to make some of those basic terminal commands more exciting. So let me pull up a terminal here and let's talk about Russian roulette in the terminal. You guys have probably seen this passed around a million times on Linux forums and chat rooms and things. It's basically playing Russian roulette with the terminal. So if I do in the bash shield here, I'm going to do an opening bracket space and then a dollar symbol, then another opening brackets dollar symbol, and then in all caps random space. And then we need to divide by something. So do a percent sign for divide by, let's do six to keep with with the Russian roulette theme because that's typically how many bullets are in a revolver and that's the whole point <laughs> of doing this. So do the closing brackets and then space equals space zero and then do the second closing brackets. And then we're basically saying we want a one in six chance. And if we hit on our one in six chance, what we want you to do is run whatever command comes after the two amper signs. And typically for a Russian roulette kind of game, you'd do a pseudo rm dash rf. Very dangerous command, especially on your root directory. That would wipe out your machine if you got lucky. <laughs> so I strongly uh, advise you not to do the Russian roulette. Of course, you know, five times out of six, you're going to dodge that bullet. A matter of fact, I would just have an echo out you know, the five times out of six. You know, hey, you dodged a bullet guy, but you know, one time out of six, you know, it's going to pseudo RM RF. But that's not a very practical kind of command, but you can do some really cool stuff with this Russian roulette style command, though. What if instead of having a one in six chance of wiping out our system. Maybe you take a command you run all the time in the terminal, like clearing the screen. Maybe you take a one in 10 chance. Every time you clear the screen, it runs some silly program. So how this is going to look basically is you do the same thing with the brackets. You do dollar symbol random divided by 10 because we want a one in 10 chance. And then do the two amper signs after the last closing bracket. What do you want a one in 10 chance of? Well, I want a one in 10 chance of running C matrix. No, that, that's pretty standard, right? And then you could do two pipe symbols for or because nine times out of 10, C matrix is not going to run, right? So what do you want to do the nine times out of 10 that you don't hit the lottery, basically? Well, you want to actually run the command clear. So if I just run that, it cleared the screen. But if I run it again, eventually one time out of 10, C matrix is going to run. Now, if I Q to quit out of C matrix, you know, I can get back into the terminal. But what I would do is I would add a timeout here. So if I do the one in 10 random chance here and and timeout space and then give it a, a value, maybe four seconds and then C matrix and then the two pipe symbols clear. So one time out of 10, we're going to hit on, on the lottery ticket here and it's going to run C matrix for four seconds. Otherwise, it's just going to clear the screen. So let's run it. And eventually I should get lucky and there we go. And C matrix should run for four seconds and then clear the screen. Perfect. Now, obviously to make this even more fun, what you should do is take that command and in your bash RC, I would alias clear equals, and then you got to wrap it all in quotes. Add that to your bash RC. And now every time you type clear or do your key binding for clear, you have a one in 10 chance of C matrix running for four seconds just to annoy you or just to brighten up your day. Some other appropriate commands that you could, you know, alias clear to is you could do this random command here and maybe do an SL for steam locomotive. And if we run that a few times until we trigger the steam locomotive, it's going to run for four seconds and then stop uh, some other cool stuff. I'm, I have ASCII Aquarium on my system. So that's a really nice ASCII art aquarium. So if I clear the screen enough times, I'll eventually trigger ASCII Aquarium for four seconds. And I have another program on my system called CBeams. If I do CBeams dash O, give it the O flag. You'll see what this does when I finally hit. And we get these beams appearing on the screen all over the screen for four seconds. If you really want to annoy yourself, what I would do is I would get rid of the timeout and everything, and I would do a screen lock. So I have Slock, Suckless's screen locking utility on my system. And so one time out of 10, the screen is actually going to lock and I'm going to have to enter a password to get back in. And of course, nine times out of 10, clear will just clear the screen as normal. So let me run this a few times until I finally trigger it. And <laughs> I, I triggered it. 
and I have to type a password to get back into my screen here. One thing you could do is you could run a command with curl. This particular curl command, what it does, it goes out and grabs this shell script from GitHub and it basically takes a music video and runs it kind of in ASCII art right here in the terminal. So if I run that, you'll see what that does. Thankfully, there's no audio. <laughs> but I, I have a feeling you guys know what that is. Now I have that curl command actually aliased in my bash RC. I have that alias to RR. Maybe you guys can figure out why I named it RR. So what I want to do is I want to have a 1 in 10 chance of the RR command to actually execute. Otherwise, the 9 in 10 chance to clear the screen. So let's see this in action. And there it goes. <laughs> I triggered... Uh, the video you guys don't get any audio but never gonna give you up never gonna let you down and the last thing I want to show you guys is there's some really cool scripts out there that you can use to uh, run these VT100 ASCII art video <laughs> displays for those of you that are not familiar with what VT100 is VT100 is an old school video terminal introduced in the late 70s by DEC Digital Equipment Corporation anyway there's all these these VT100 animations out there for example, if I clicked on one Bambi.vt, basically an ASCII art animation. You can see it starts off giving you some text, and if I scroll through, you see Bambi's walking around, and you'll eventually see what happens to Bambi here in a minute. Uh, I'll actually play it on screen. But you, you get your VT animation scripts, and I will link to this particular website. I downloaded all of them as part of a zip file. And then you need to run the animations with this Perl script. I will also link to the Perl script. And if I get back into my terminal here, let me cd into this directory I created in my home directory called vt100. And if I do an ls, you will see all those vt animations. And I also have the Perl script. It's called slowcat.pl. Well, if I do a period slash slowcat.pl space and then one of the animations, let's do the Bambi animation. I think it was Bambi.vt. Let me hit enter. And we will watch the adventures of Bambi. Number one, Bambi versus Godzilla. That's kind of cool. Deer just playing. Okay, the end. <laughs> Let me clear the screen, do an ls again. Let's do the uh, slowcat.pl one more time, and let's just try another one. I see Zorro here at the end. Let's run that one just to see what that is. Some of these animations last a, a good bit of time. Some of them are rather quick. This is basically a sword fight. I like that. Well, this is really neat. Somebody took a lot of time <laughs> to put some of these together. Now, what I would do is I would probably alias that, you know, do another alias for the clear command where I have a 1 in 10 chance of slow cat and some VT animation running. So what I would do is I would do something like slow cat dot PL and then I'm going to do a dollar symbol and then the opening parentheses and I would run the LS command. So I'm going to do slash bin slash LS for the full path to LS. The reason I do that is because my LS is alias to something else, so I need to actually do the full path to the actual LS command. So I'm telling basically the shell, run a LS in this directory, and then I want to pipe that through grip, and I want all the .vt files. And we're going to do a shuf-n1 to take exactly one VT file at random. Then we need, to, of course, the closing parentheses there, and if you run that, it should play a random VT animation every time. This one is Christmassy, you know, Christmas tree and a fairy. Let me control C to stop it. If I ran another one, we'd get a different one at random. This one is Disneyland's Tomorrowland. And if you wanted to set a proper alias for this, what I would do is I would just add it to your bash RC or your ZSHRC or whatever shell you're in. In my case, I'm going to add it to my bash RC. You see, I have clear the terminal and I'm going to alias the clear command for a one in 10 random chance. So let me write that and quit relaunch bash here or a subshell of bash actually. Then let me type clear and I'll just keep doing clear until we finally hit. Because one time out of ten, yeah, we get lucky and we get a random VT animation. It's like a chicken going into an oven. 
not exactly sure what's going on here. And it comes out. Happy Thanksgiving. I guess it was a turkey going into the oven. So just a few things that you can do to kind of spice up the terminal. Uh, I like playing with bash aliases, and I kind of like having some randomness in the terminal. Like when you do a ls, maybe one time out of ten, it's not really the ls command. You know, it's the Hollywood script or, or something crazy running. It, it does make things a little less boring, a little less monotonous, especially if you're in a terminal you are running the same commands all day, every day. Now, before I go, I want to thank a few special people. I want to thank Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Haplo, Nate, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, Lee Request, Omri, Paul, Rob, Sean, Tobias, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. I also want to thank each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen, all these names you're seeing on the screen, all my supporters over on Patreon. If you'd like to support my work, consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.